Hi family, welcome back. Thank you for being here. I'm going to talk to you about why I don't think kids need toys. If you like these video topics on minimalism, make sure you let me know by hitting the thumbs up button below. And as always, leave your questions and comments down below. I try to get to them as much as possible, as well as subscribe if you haven't already so you can stick around for more. So what do I mean by kids don't need toys? I wanna to clarify this first because I believe that imagination, creativity, and being able to just simply enjoy life is super, super important. In fact, I think it's one of the most important things, which is why I'm generating this topic. It seems a little ironic, but I'll get into it. I also think this applies to adults as well. What I mean by adult toys, to make an example of myself, would be things like video games, tech, an abundance of instruments, too many camping or yoga gear type stuff. These are things that can easily distract and overwhelm us and keep us from actually living the life that we desire. This was also a concept that was really hard for me to understand when I first got into minimalism, the philosophy of choosing to keep what adds value to you and removing the things that don't was how in the world can I quantify the idea that the less I own, the more time, money, and meaningful experiences I will have. Hopefully in today's video, I'll show you why kids' toys and abundance of the toys that we typically buy and overwhelm our children with today will help you see why it makes a massive difference. Number one, too many toys, too many things, too many stuff is just a major distraction. You can't focus on one thing that actually is meaningful and adds value. You become skilled at nothing and overwhelmed by so many things. You tend to not have that much drive and focus to actually do the things that are meaningful and skill building for you. This same principle applies to kids. When kids have too many toys, they're not motivated to do anything. They're so busy being entertained with the thing that's right in front of them that they lack the initiative initiation to want to actually do something different, like spend quality time together, or actually learn something. And they tend to get bored really easily. Number two, one of the major hurdles in parenting is getting your kids to clean up after themselves. Just clean it and keep it clean. And when you have so many toys and you have so many things, it creates a clutter everywhere, which is actually cluttering to your mind, your environment, your mental space, your creativity and the capacity, just physically that manifests internally because everything's cluttered here, so it's cluttered up here as well. It just kind of ties back to the distraction. If you're sitting here trying to think of something meaningful to do, but you're Guitar sitting in the corner and you have Play-Doh over here and like a ton of other stuff that blinks and flashes in front of your face, you're less likely to go and do it and it's more likely to overwhelm you inside and out. Even if you don't feel this, it kind of works the same way that eating unhealthy food does. You don't really start to notice it until over time health issues start to accumulate and when you have a ton of stuff that clutters you, over time you just start to not feel inspired or happy in your space and not motivated or like creatively wanting to do other things. Number three, simply having too many toys or things makes both us and kids lazy and distracted. I have this theory, it's called the click satisfaction theory. And this means that biologically our brains are smart. We're meant to be really efficient and to accomplish tasks. That's why triggers and subconscious things arise sometimes when we don't want them to. But click satisfaction is basically when you're able to perform or get a satisfying result in an instant or with a click. It doesn't really have to be a click. It could be something as simple as watching a movie. You sit down, you're entertained, you go through this whole process and journeys of highs and lows, problem solving, sometimes love, sometimes adventure and thrilling. And it's so easy to just sit there and watch and to allow that to fulfill that natural biological sense that needs to be fulfilled. And the truth of the matter is, our culture and our technology and everything has just evolved so quickly and we have not evolved to keep up with the pace of things. So our primitive nature, some of those things still come out and still use some of these more fast paced technologies and outlets and it becomes an imbalance. I truly believe that the people who learn how to invest their time and energy into skills that might not be rewarding now, skills such as learning arts and crafts, commitment, discipline, loyalty, and connecting with people, learning how to build connections with people takes 
takes a lot of time and energy. All those things that create delayed senses of gratification, those are the people who are really gonna feel abundance, peace, and true happiness because it's becoming a skill that needs to be honed in, developed, and learned. When it used to be innate to our being, there are so many things that are pulling us away from that natural flow of focus and discipline. Number four, time and money. This is something that you can't get back. Money quantifies something that you've invested your time into typically, unless you've learned to make money grow for you. That's another subject. But most of us trade our time for money. So when we feel regretful and we feel like we want to hold on to things, it is easy to feel attached and sort of addicted to these click satisfaction as well as the amount of time that we've invested in this and not want to give it away. And that sort of perspective rubs off on our kids and we don't want to teach them that, right? Because life's not about money, life's not about things, but if you do something productive and meaningful with your time, then all that time accumulated over time becomes a lifetime of meaningful things that are valuable to you and that adds value to the world. So when we waste our time and our money and we feel that remorse, that buyer's remorse or that regret, and we have that sort of attached karma to our things we don't want to let go of, that does actually seep into our children's perspectives and the energetic karma that we carry with us. And if you think about the way or the statistics of how many toys we buy our kids a year, how much money is spent on kids' toys, the idea that the marketing is now about collectible items and all these mystery packages, let's buy this so that we wanna collect them all and spend our money. If you watch how the marketplace works, it's meant to hook you and tie you in and get you addicted because it fulfills that click satisfaction because it's easy to be distracted and to do very little productive wise and receive a lot of satisfaction with these results. Ultimately, that is the baseline that ties us all together and it takes away precious time that we can't get back. So if you think about it, the amount of time it takes you to make the money and the time it takes us to shop and the time it takes us to organize these things, the time it takes us to just get distracted and to fiddle around with this, the time it takes us to declutter and think about, do I want this, do I not? The time it takes us to look into more things so that we can add to our collection or because it doesn't work the same without you know piece one and piece two, all this time can be put into spending quality time with the kids, teaching them something of value, showing them that community, contribution, creativity, and actually thinking consciously and intentionally about what you wanna do with your time is something that money can't buy. So I think the hardest reason this is hard to get is because you can't really quantify like one plus one equals two in this type of formula or equation. The way that we choose to add value to ourselves and remove what doesn't varies in all different accounts. The things that you need are going to move and ebb and flow with different times of your life, as well as it's difficult to say, well, if I get rid of 10 items, then I'm gonna get 10 more hours in a month. It doesn't really work like that. Every Everything that we move and use in our life is gonna apply differently to ourselves, which is why it's so important to practice the minimalism philosophy honestly with yourself and to be okay with testing and trying it out and seeing this works, this doesn't work. You don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be black and white. Just moving forward consciously with awareness for yourself is going to be super rewarding almost instantly and it's also gonna allow you more space and time to be able to feel through what direction you can move into to, to not only add more value to you, your life, your kids, but to your community and other people as well. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really feel like I've seen a lot of difference in how my kids behave and act towards life when they have less toys. They like to create more. They like to make things as toys. They're not attached to not getting toys. They don't go to the store and want to buy everything and get upset when they don't. They're more likely to share and create something to give to other people because they're more fulfilled by gifting things. They love spending time with people and most of all, they love learning new things. It's like the most amazing thing in the world because most kids get bored doing the stuff they're supposed to do, like cleaning the house, doing schoolwork, and trying to spend time with people. But our kids, ever since we've removed all or most of the toys that they have enjoy and are inspired with most of that. And the toys that we have kept, the few, are typically stored away and they don't really 
play with them. So I don't even know why we have them other than the fact that I still am a product of my culture that says, well, I don't want to rob kids of having toys. So maybe we'll have a few. So anyways, those are my perspectives on it. If you guys have found any other thoughts on why kids shouldn't have toys, or if you want to share your story about how removing toys from your kid's life has positively or even negatively improved, stick in the comments below. I love these conversations and I think we could add a lot of value to one another simply by sharing. As always, thank you so much for being here. Be good, be great, be grateful most of all. I'm grateful for you and I hope you guys have a great week. Ciao.